Welcome to Lesson 4 on how to build a Raspberry Pi robot step-by-step. -step. I'm Sean. Great to see you back. In the last lesson, we talked about motor control of DC brush motors. In this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion on actuators by looking at servo motors and stepper motors. Let's start with servos. We're going to use pulse width modulation to control the angle of rotation. Please review lesson two to get the refresher before we continue. To control this standard servo, we're going to vary the pulse width in a 20 millisecond period. If we have a 0.5 millisecond pulse width, that is a 2.5% duty cycle, which indicates the 180 degree position. If we adjust that pulse width to 1.5 millisecond, that is a 7.5% duty cycle. And that indicates the 90 degree position. And if we have a 2.5 millisecond pulse width, that will be a 12.5% duty cycle. And that would put it in the zero degree position. The standard servo, you can control any position between 0 and 180 degrees by selecting the duty cycle. A continuous rotation servo motor rotates 360 degrees and you could only control the speed and the direction. We'll test out this high-tech, high-torque geared standard servo motor. This shows the schematic of the servo motor. Here we have the Raspberry Pi that is powered by a separate power bank. And here is the servo with a 6 volt battery pack connected to it as the power supply. All common grounds are connected. I created a file called servotest.py. First we import the libraries as we've done before. I'm using the rpi.gpio time set mode bcm and gpio.setup. I'm using pin 20 that the servo is connected to. This is an output pin. And that pin is set to a 50 hertz frequency. Okay, so first I'm starting at 7.5% duty cycle, so that puts it at the 90 degree position. So in our main program here, what I want to do for this experiment is I'm going to have it at 180 degrees position, then I'm going to have it move to the 90 degrees position, and then at zero, and then just continuously repeat. Okay, so to do that, go servo test and we change the duty cycle as we done in lesson two change duty cycle and we're going to use 2.5 percent duty cycle which is at the 180 degrees i'm going to use a one second delay between the changing of the positions okay and now i want it to go to the 90 degrees position here so that will be servo test change duty cycle. And what would it be? That's right, 7.5% duty cycle. That puts it at uh, that middle position or at 90 degrees. Again, we'll have a one second delay here. And now I want to put it at the zero degree position. Okay, servo test change duty cycle. And what would that duty cycle be? Yes, 12.5%. Okay, time.sleep. Let's test out this program. In this presentation, we're going to talk about how stepper motors work, modes of operation, types of stepper motors, and interfacing to the stepper motor. A stepper motor translates electrical pulses into mechanical movement used for position control in disk drives, printers, and robotics. A stepper motor has a rotor shaft surrounded by a stator. A four-phase stepper motor, which is what we're using today, have four stator windings paired with a center tap common. The center tap allows a change of current direction in each of the two coils when a winding is grounded, causing a polarity change of the stator. The shaft moves in a fixed repeatable increment, allowing precise positioning with direction of rotation dictated by the stator poles. How do stepper motors work? In this variable reluctant stepper motor example, here we're energizing two coils at a time to 
rotate the rotor. Modes of operation? There are two types that you must know, bipolar and unipolar. The bipolar is required to have an H-bridge motor driver. We talked about the H-bridge in lesson three. The unipolar does not require an H-bridge connection. Instead, there is a driver on each coil. When looking at the stepping sequence, there are the normal four-step sequence or full wave, which is more commonly used. There's the eight step and the wave drive. We're gonna use the full wave four-step. The stepping sequence is the same between the bipolar and unipolar. And when we are energizing these pairs of coils, we look at step one, which is one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero one one zero and it repeats to do the other direction is just the opposite way for each pulse the motor receives its shaft rotates through a fixed precise angle depending on the pattern of pulses applied the stepper motor can be used to control the position and or velocity of a load accurately here are a few definitions step angle angular rotation in degrees the shaft moves each time its winding polarity is changed Step response, time for a motor to move through a single step. Step per revolution, total number of steps required by a motor's shaft for it to rotate 360 degrees. Steps per second, number of angular steps the motor goes through in one second. And holding torque, with the motor shaft at standstill or zero RPM condition, the amount of torque from an external source required to break away the shaft from its holding position. Measured with rated voltage and current applied to the motor, in metric units you will see kilogram centimeter. Types of stepper motors. When working on your projects, you will want to select the appropriate stepper. You will find bipolar and unipolar stepper motors with various torque ratings. You will also find digital linear actuators interfacing to the stepper motor. This right here represents the microcontroller or single board computer. And we're going to be using the ULN2003 motor driver for our unipolar stepper. Here's a drawing of the windings. You see the pink, orange, yellow, blue wires and the red wire connected to the center tap. Here you can see the stepping sequence as we discussed earlier. For the clockwise rotation, you will have the steps going in from 1 to 4. For a counterclockwise rotation, you do the opposite from 4 to 1. We'll be using this popular unipolar stepper motor and the ULN2003 driver board. Here's the schematic of the stepper motor. Here we have the ULN2003 motor driver that is connected to the stepper over here. Now observe the power supply we have here. I have a 9 volt battery that's connected to this 7805 voltage regulator which provides a 5 volt output that's feeding to the stepper motor. Now let's walk through the code for the stepper. First step is we're importing our libraries as usual, set mode, BCM, and we're assigning GPIO pins 18, 23, 24, and 25 to in 1 to 4 respectively. Those are all output pins. So now let me explain how this function works. Okay, we want to rotate the rotor clockwise. So we have a delay that's being accepted as well as the sequence which is the number of times it will execute this for loop here. Okay, that will indicate what the angle is. So when you take a look at the steps here, okay, and going clockwise, we have 1010 zero, one, zero, 1001, zero, 0101, zero, one, zero, one, and 0110, okay, with a delay in between. Also, with the counterclockwise rotation, you will have the steps in the reverse order. So, 0110, 0101, 1001, and 1010. This function here energizes the coils according to the step that was called in the previous functions. So I'm gonna have a prompt for the user here to enter in the delay and the angle, okay? So the delay will be in milliseconds, and the shorter the delay, the faster the rotation. Now for this motor, it takes 2,048 steps to make a full rotation. Now if you look back at the function, there are four steps that it goes through 
in that function. So if I call that function 512 times, it will make a full rotation. See what I mean? Okay, in this experiment, I'm gonna get it to rotate clockwise 90 degrees, pause for a second, and then counterclockwise 90 degrees, and then exit the program here. Okay, so it's gonna call that clockwise function and pass the delay as well as the number of times it's going to execute the function, which will be indicating the angle. It's gonna pause for a second and then do the same thing counterclockwise. It will then disable the pins and exit the program. So it's a one-time execution here. You can find the code by following the link in the description below. So let's first put in a delay of, say, 10 milliseconds. And 90 degrees angle. In this lesson, we covered servo and stepper motor control. Your assignment is to connect the circuits that we looked at in this lesson. Try playing around with the speed of rotation and the angle of rotation. How would you apply this to your project? Please leave a comment below if you have any questions. On the next lesson, we're going to implement the Pi camera to our robot. It's going to be tons of fun. Hey, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.